Some Debo Samuel things to get to. First off, um, if you missed any portion of our Peter King conversation, we've got it for you coming up here in a little bit. In it, he stated that, um, and here's the direct quote, I'd be surprised if they're able to pay both Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk at or near top of the receiver market when the bill comes due for them. Surprised but not shocked. I'm not positive they'll be able to sign both of those guys. It's an interesting time to talk about both guys because the Niners are 2-0, and and one game was an IU game, and one game was a Debo game. And the Debo games, they hit a little different, right? Because I don't know, and, and we asked Peter this, we've been racking our brains. Is there anybody, at least in the recent history of the league, that plays the way he does? I'd, I'd argue no. A, a receiver who doubles as a running back is also probably the most physical finisher at the position, seems to be able to convert the chains in so many different ways. And then lastly, and this is the part that I think is maybe most intriguing of all, you want to talk about the lack of connectivity of the San Francisco Giants with their fan base? Debo's the opposite. Like, there is a different sound. There's a different reaction from the fan base when it's Debo. And I, and I think it's because largely of his style of play. It's a lot there. I think it's partly the style. I think it's partly his name. I mean, the name Debo That's fun. carries yeah. with it a certain cachet, especially if you're a fan of the movie Friday which is more than a cult classic. It's an absolute classic. So if his name, if he went by just Tyshawn, his God-given name, would we still love him? Yes. But the fact that he's D-Bo, I do think adds a little extra to it. For sure. And the fact that he plays a little bit like the movie character, but he plays like a bully. Yeah. I, he's I, out to try to hurt you with well, the football. I think it's just, it's just different. And, and we, you know, it's kind of like when a Steph Curry three-pointer goes in versus anybody else's three. It's just different. It's just a different sound. Yeah. It's just a little bit extra. You know, it's him and Trent Williams that come out with the boom box. He's a team leader. Um, I, I saw last summer, it sort of, it challenged the core of each 49er fan. This idea that he's scrubbing his social and asking for a trade. It's like, Debo? That's our guy. It's just business. I know it is. I it's know, no but problem. I had the same feeling but as you. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's our guy. That's Debo. That's like, remember Debo was a 49er before he was even a 49er. It's the worst kept secret in the draft. Was that it was like Kyle Shanahan loves Debo Samuel. Senior Bowl, Debo, Debo, Debo. We were hearing about him in January before he got drafted in the second round. Yeah. So it's just something about it. There's something about it. And um, I'm trying to think about your opening statement, your question of what player. Can you even think about in recent past or in modern football who's like him? And uh, we asked Peter King, and you can hear the full interview coming up here in about 15 minutes. And he had an interesting answer about you know who might be that way. And I actually asked him about other teams emulating what the Niners have because the Niners have two of them. McCaffrey is a running back who also you could have him be your receiver. He could be a Wes Welker he could be, you know, any of these other guys in the slot as an exclusive receiver and rack up 100 catches, and you could put Debo in the backfield and give him 15 totes a game, and he could be a legitimate running back. So the Niners have two of these guys. Yeah. Will other teams look for the next kind of Debo player? And I, Atlanta thinks they have one in Bijan Robinson, and I mentioned Austin Eckler, who's more of a Christian McCaffrey, obviously, than he is a Debo Samuel, but... Teams, I think, are going to go looking for these two-way threats. Um, have you watched Bijan yet? Oh, he's no. a lot of fun to watch. Holy hell! He's I the mean, whole. He's the whole package: speed, uh, footwork, two, jukage, two NFL power. games. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is just—it's ridiculous. Yeah. Go if you get a chance to watch Bijan Robinson play for the Falcons. Get your Red Zone channel or whatever yeah. it is. Oh my goodness! It's partly why I've been so high on Atlanta this year is you know he's good, and then they've got Algier, who's another good running back, so yep. they can kind of fire and ice you a little bit. And my guy Cordero Patterson, if he ever gets healthy, I'm probably uh, gonna have to drop yeah, him. I'm not too big. He hasn't on, played. Yeah, but. their defense, and I just think you know Ritter. Ritter has, and I don't want to get into Falcons talk, but Ritter's kept things <laughs> together uh, for sure. But but like their pass catchers 
are just never, and I don't mean this from a fantasy standpoint, I just think yeah. their offense is limited because they can't they can't utilize people downfield. Like how the hell how the hell do you draft Kyle Pitts where you did? And, and and now this is Kyle Pitts' NFL career. You got to be kidding me. The guy's getting like two catches a game. I know. It, it's like that guy is an absolute animal. He's an animal, and they can't do it. They can't do it. They just can't get their ball to their pass catchers. But Bijan Robinson is absolutely crazy. And uh, and and yeah, maybe someone who deserves to be already in the conversation when we talk about Debo. By the way, speaking of Debo, here he is. Uh, with Kay Adams on Up and Adams, they asked him why his team loves Brock Purdy so much. That's why, I, you know, we love Brock in this building. He don't make excuses. He take full responsibility for his mistakes, even though, you know, uh, we was talking about it on the sideline and, you know, like we'll want to have those, but there's nothing we can do about it. So I think that's why we love Brock in this offense as a, as a leader of this team. That's why he kind of got the cabin on his shirt because it's little things like that, that, you know what I'm saying, that people try to blame somebody else or try to blame something else on it, but he took full responsibility and like that's what practice for. Like we practice that all the time. Um, everything is not going to be perfect, but um, at the end of the day, we got to win and we'll be able to move on. Yeah, I, I, I just, I noticed that, you know, when, when that guy's on the field and he makes a play, and for some reason it seems even more so against the Rams, I was immediately reminded last week of last year when he did that Instagram post after going right by Jalen Ramsey, broke that tackle in the open field, and went for a long touchdown. It was, uh-oh, uh oh, <laughs> and I mean he's just right. He's got the vibe. He's got the trash talk. He's got the boom box. He is the most physical receiver. The one thing I've said about Debo throughout my life covering him as a broadcaster is he terrifies me because he and, and he left for a second in that game on Sunday as well. You saw him go to the sideline and he was hanging on for something. Something didn't feel right. He's almost too physical. He's almost too physical. And and so I wonder sometimes about his longevity. Yeah, and he's had a few instances of injury, but that's partly why I think fans love him, and that's why it's so fun to watch him, is because he gets the football either as a running back or as a wide receiver, and it feels like there's going to be contact, and he's going to win. You don't often see guys hit him and him going backward. You don't often see him run toward the sideline or run out of bounds. He's looking for contact. He's looking to move the defender further down the field, move the pile, yak boys and all the rest of it. And something about the way he runs, too. It seems like he takes a lot of short steps. He's not a big, long strider. He holds the ball kind of high. He's got a high center of gravity. He's tough to tackle, and his legs are powerful. Just the way he runs, it seems like he's got a lot of leg movement for every step that he goes. You know what else I noticed, and and, and you're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. And, and maybe this should go beyond Debo. But do you want to know why? Like, beyond the obvious, Steph Curry is like, for a lot of us, like the craziest thing we've ever seen in sports. Right? This tiny little guy who can shoot the ball from three quarters of the court, best shooters ever lived. Um, just all of the things that he brings to the court and off the court for that matter. But I think one of the reasons Steph connects with an audience the way he does is because he very much appears to be having a great time playing the sport. And there is that whole, do you play with love or do you play with an angry streak? And I think fans connect so much more with players who play with that almost that grin on their face like they're enjoying the hell out of doing it. Brock Purdy's run against the Steelers for the first down, the scramble, and that highlight clip of him getting up with a big grin on his face. Yeah. Pow, first down. I think a lot of people are like, oh, Brock's got that in him. We didn't know that. Debo Samuel plays like that. There are smiles. There's chatter. There is a love of being out there on that field that really kind of connects with an audience. Although I would also say, like, that might be one of the reasons this team has connected with an audience to the level it is because they got a bunch of those guys. Right. Kittle is one of those guys. Without a doubt. Kittle um, gets up with his little right. point, same thing. And you don't have a lot of like mean-tempered guys. Nick Bosa gets a sack, and instead of a big celebratory dance or a taunt, it's just a shrug. It's just the Nick Bosa, a eh, little bit of a humble brag, so to speak. But I don't think that this team exudes that sort of in your face, 
over the top, braggadocious trash talk. It doesn't mean that they're soft. Fred Warner, Drake Greenlaw isn't afraid to maybe give you a little bit of extra along the apron or the sideline. And you mentioned Talanoa Hufunga yesterday yep, another one. and his propensity to lay some lumber. So these guys aren't soft and manby pamby and, and good guys finish last in. But I don't get that sense that they're playing with that anger and that that edge of like this is my job and I gotta be I gotta game face it all the way through. They do seem to enjoy it. Uh, do you buy what Peter King said though when we brought this up? Quote: I'd be surprised if they're able to pay both Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk at or near the top of the receiver market. Surprised but not shocked. So he's certainly not writing it off. He's not saying that it's not possible. Um, but he'd be surprised if they'd be able to do it. I have no doubt in my mind that Ayuk is going to command, I don't know, 24, 25? Yeah. Tyreek's yep. at 30. Justin is going to bust the heck out of that. Let me pull up right now. Top uh, paid uh, wide receivers 2023. Where are we at right now? Um, Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill, and the like. Okay. Um, that's interesting. 2023 salary alone. Tyreek is getting 30 per year over the life of the deal, but this year just 26. Okay. 26.1. Devontae Adams, 26.6. Stephon Diggs, 24.4. DJ Moore, 20.16. You got Amari Cooper on here. I'm not sure where AJ Brown got that new deal with the Eagles. I'm not sure why he's not on here, but anyway. Uh, Christian Kirk is up there, I know. He's at 16 and a half. I heard a report uh, over the weekend. uh, It might have been from. Ross Tucker, who I think was doing his game, talking about great character, great locker room guy, Christian Kirk. They were raving about him, and I was thinking about you because you always cite that deal oh. as one of the gigantic overpays. Well, he's a very good player. Yeah, and he's a good, good, good player, but they were just raving about but, what a good guy he was, and it, it made me smile I, like, thinking about this conversation that we've all had. Did someone respond to Ross and go, by the way, a guy who hasn't even played for the last two years has already leaped him to be wide receiver one on that squad? Yeah. Like, you, I, that's just me. Like, I'm surprised you're going to put that amount of money in, into that particular player i think you can get more for that doesn't mean he's not a good player he's a very good player yeah yeah he's a very good player to your point about peter king saying he's not sure if they'll be able to pay both remember that doesn't have to happen until 2025 now Ayuk will get the extension before that but his fifth year options already been picked at 14.1 next year so the big money drops in 2025 not next year correct but if you're going to sign up for the deal you got to sign up for the deal i know there's outs with debo like right now uh, i now have the actual and this is for aav so forget what they're making this year aav tyreek's number one at 30 Devonte adams is two at 28 cooper cup is number three 26 7 aj brown is four at 25 Diggs and metcalf are both tied for fifth at 24 and d bo is seventh at 23.85 then it goes terry mclaurin dj moore keenan allen to round out the top 10 when brandon Ayuk's deal comes up justin jefferson will have already leaped in front of that entire crowd sure i mean are you putting him in that crew keenan allen and add in mike williams those are the right now. Oh, and Amari Cooper and Chris Godwin. Those are the thirteen wide receivers right now that make twenty million or more. I think Brandon's going to that group. He's in the group. He, I think he's yeah. going to that group. And I, I, I wonder. I wonder if the 49ers, with already having the seventh highest paid guy, will be willing to have another top ten guy. And I also wonder, and we'll never be able to find this out, but I wonder. If that isn't part of the motivation for Brandon Ayuk to go out and play on Thursday, even though he's a little bit banged up because he knows he's in a spot where his contract at the end of this year has a chance to be extended and he has a chance to get a a monster deal. And if Brandon Ayuk has a year that he wants to have, which is, you know, 100 catches-ish, because I know they like to spread it around and Brock Purdy and, and company, they don't throw it a ton, but... Let's give him 90 catches. Let's give him 1,100 yards and nine touchdowns. Well, then you're getting that 20 million. You're in that club. But if you only play 12 or 13 games because you have this injury or that nagging injury, and all of a sudden you wind up with 67 catches and 850 yards and seven touchdowns, 
That'll cost you millions, Mark. Uh, millions. Well, yes. Millions. Yep, and it also factors right back to the question that you asked a little while ago. I mean, you don't think Brian, Brandon Ayuk has that on his mind when we're talking about, we oh, just miss a game, Brandon, it'll be fine. Miss a game? Miss a game? Like, with my season-ending stats going into an extension year, that could be a big freaking deal. Yeah. What's the difference between... 1,300 yards and only 1,100 or 1,150 or what have you. Sure. I mean, that's a big, big deal. Might be 5 to 7 million total. I mean, on, I over know. the life of a deal, right? I, you know, I, I don't know if I'd put one game into that, but yes, like they're, they're, this is part of the. I'm sure he's pushing to play. I'm sure he's pushing to play. Yeah. And if he was able to come back in the second half and play and he was, then sure, he wants to get out there. But. Same time, if you go out and play, you want to be able to get the ball thrown to you. Don't you don't want to be out there and be a show pony or be a decoy? No, no, absolutely not. But I, I don't know, man. Again, I'm I'm torn because uh, the idea is, hey, because you're dinged up, you can't make it any worse, right? That's what everyone's saying. Just a pain tolerance thing. Well, if you can't make it any worse, and it's just a pain tolerance thing, well, then what are we actually even talking about? Because that's what every football player is doing every week. Can't make it any worse. Pain tolerance. That's football. You don't think Christian McCaffrey's in pain right now? We haven't heard about it. Yeah. But he's a running back who's had 50 touches in two weeks. You know who's not in pain? Who? Eli Mitchell. That's <laughs> a good response. Didn't, I mean, no, no special teams, no awesome <laughs> offensive snaps. His feet might hurt from standing around. I mean, his feelings might be hurt. Yeah. His feelings might be See hurt. See if he shows up on the uh, injury report tomorrow. Yeah.